Greetings, sisters and brothers. Jumbo. Jumbo. I specifically started with greetings to the women folks and then move on to the men folks. For the simple reason, woman comes first. The art is a woman, and from the art, all things evolve. A woman, by the blessings of the Creator, does not have a man to bring forth a child. That has been proven. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My brothers from the Chinese Embassy, welcome. Brothers and sisters from all organizations, whether you're here or individually or representing organizations, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are here to celebrate Kwanzaa. For some, they may want to know what is Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa is really a Swahili word that is used to represent forced fruit. It is Kwanzaa is really an annual celebration which evolves from African American culture, which begins on December the 26th and ends on the 1st of January, the 1st of the next year. It was created by Dr. Maluma Karengo in 1966. Dr. Karengo is an author, is a professor of African studies at California University. This all came about, that, um, it started in 1966. There was an event that occurred in 1965. In a, community, in a community named Watts, uh, which has about 34,000, or had about 34,000 Africans living in the community. And there was a rebellion, which left 34 persons dead and millions of dollars lost within the community. Dr. Krengo searched for ways to bring Africans' communities together. He started a foundation named U.S., which was a cultural organization, and started to research African celebrations. Dr. Krengo combined several different harvest celebrations, such as those from the Ashanti and the Zulu, to come up with this one-week celebration for our people. Kwanzaa is unique. It is neither religious nor is it political. It's based on seven fundamental principles referred to as Ngozo Saba. These principles forms the pillar for the meaningful life to guide the lives of individuals, families, and communities. These principles 
starting on the 26th, starting on the 26th of December, the fourth day is Yujuma, which stands for unity. The second day, which is the 27th, is Kujakaliyo, where we defined ourselves, name ourselves. On the 28th, Yujima, collective works and responsibility. The 29th is Yujama, which dealt with cooperative economics. The last celebration we had here at, 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 at our museum, we celebrated cooperative economics. And now, today, the 29th, we are moving on to, oh sorry, the 29th, we celebrated cooperative economics, sorry about that. And today, the 30th, it's NIA, develop and building ourselves and our community. We, as a community within Buxton, for me, our knowledge have increased because of technology, but our lives has gone way back. If we look at what our ancestors did, how they struggled to build our community. As a small boy, I knew Buxton had everything that you can think about. We had a thriving market, we had a dentist, we had a jewelry store, we had barber shops, we have shops, groceries, and look at Buxton today. Look at Buxton today, nothing. We have a garment factory. That's about the only thing and we had a garment factory here. It's sad. And there I come to women again, especially the young ones. Because education starts in the womb. Education starts in the womb. And for our men folks who are present, I would like to say to you, our woman first reaction to the situation is emotional. And God has made us in such a way, the man first reaction most times is intellectual. I am saying this to say, when there are problems within homes, a woman reacts. It's for you to identify or strengthen our weaknesses. Because if you also react with her, that's our turf. She knows she can't beat you, but she still will pelt her hands or what's not, because that's a form of expression for her. Right? It's for men to recognize that. Walk away, and when she flips into the she is, intellectual she mode, you reason with her, she and she will listen. The tor tor for moving on to the tor force, we have Kumbo to do and develop our communities. And the first of January, although when we enter January, based on, on geophysics, we will be behind by six hours at the start of January. It's Imani to believe in our people, parents, teachers, and leaders. Those are the seven principles that we should adopt in our lives. Like I said, it's not religious. It's for the building of homes and building of communities. Those are the seven principles that Dr. Karengo came up with and it could be scrutinized and found to be faultless. 
Ashe. I would like at this point in time to hand you over to Mr. Dion Abrams, community activist who will proceed with libations. Um, okay. Jambo, brothers and sisters, special welcome to our friends from the Chinese Embassy. We do appreciate your coming to be with us uh, to celebrate Kwanzaa at the end of this year, 2023. Yeah, so we're pouring libation. And libation is an African custom. It's uh, basically the recognition of our ancestors who have passed. Uh, generally, uh, we understand that within the African community, recognition is given to uh, those who are uh, the elders in the community and those who have passed and would have contributed to our present. And so before we really engage ourselves in any meetings and so on, we acknowledge those ancestors uh, because in some African religions, uh, there are deities and there are basically different uh, kinds of gods. Uh, there are what we call celestial beings, those who live in the air. There are uh, earthbound, uh, spirits and then there are the spirits of the ancestors and so because we put our ancestors in the ground it is to the ground that we pour libation and invite them to be among us as we celebrate or congregate and so uh, we pour to the ground to recognize our ancestors who have contributed to this beautiful village of ours, their efforts would have uh, been the cause of us having this wonderful community to call our home. In fact, their sacrifice it is uh, that after slavery, uh, not even a year would have passed, they were able to muster their literal resources, their monies that they earned from during the apprenticeship period and even prior to that, during slavery, they had their little markets and so on. And so they pulled their resources and bought this plantation, formerly Orange Nassau, and renamed it Buxton in recognition of the struggles of Thomas Fowler Buxton, who was part of the liberation struggle for the Africans. And so to our ancestors who bought this village, we say, Ashe. And so uh, the history of the village is one of strength and valor and we do have among us people who would have been integral to our culture, our spirit of community, our spirit of dedication to uh, fighting against those who would have tried to uh, somewhere or other make us subservient to them and so it is because of that that Buxton is always looked upon as a village to represent the people whenever uh, there are times of need for struggle and so the name of Buxton is always called and so I'm going to call on any of the persons here to give recognition to some of those mighty stalwarts of the village whether they've been part of education, culture, uh, business, in whatever form they would have contributed. Even medicine and herbal medicine, we have uh, people who would have contributed in every sphere in the life of this beautiful country of ours. And so we recognize those people. Uh, 
We can call the names of our ancestors. Mama Fifi. Mama Fifi. Miss Herbalist. Miss Frida. Miss Frida. Herbalist. Yvonne Levi. Yvonne Levi. The land on which they are. Donated this piece of ground upon which this a beautiful building is located. Headmaster Hector Lee, my cousin. <laughs> Who's that? W. E. Young. W. E. Young. Including George? George Young. George Young. <laughs> Brother Scarry, that uh, was in Yeah, Scarry. Yeah, Scarry he here. worked here, a brother of the village. He died only last year, and so we recognize him as one of our brothers. Oh, um, Willabus, Ronald Willabus. H. V. Hope, Headmistress. Headmistress Hope. Uh, Brother Talbot. Raymond, Brother Raymond Talbot. Raymond Talbot. Talbot. Um, board member of the Friends of the Village Museum. <laughs> yeah, he died only last month. Annie Brown. Yes. And Molly yes. Brown. Molly Brown. Um, a contributor to the museum, Dr. Josiah. Dr. Josiah. Yes. Kwame Apato. Kwame Apato. Rampasat Tiwari. one of our scholars. Yes. Clive Rupchan. And Mr. Buta Singh. yes. And Kofi. Kwesi and Kofi. Mm -hmm. Chandraban, old drugstore man, Dan Kunchin, yes. <laughs> we had um, Man IV and all them people, you know, those strong women. Yeah, teacher Hader. John Europe. John Europe. You know, oh, we had women that used to climb coconut tree. Better than men, you know. And then they used to be. Fighters, you know, you can't really be them. Yeah. <laughs> Men Mama were afraid. Mommy <laughs> Jackson and yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, man. Kano and Kano. Well, Kano was a, a monster. He was a giant, you know. If you hold you in the middle, he could lift you with one hand and so on. So we had human some sand truck. Human sand truck. That's Daddy Jones. It. right. Daddy Jones. Daddy Jones. <laughs> yeah, man. The youngsters don't know man. Men are these people, right? We, 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 we had people, you know. Some even we could recognize even Butch Blair. Yeah. Jim <laughs> 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 Campbell. Uh, the one that's the last person that they. Yeah, market. Right, so yeah. we. Yeah. Maybe I also feel like we some victims of the Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Well, the innocent youths. The innocent youths who died between the period 2005, 2000, uh, 2002, 2005. Yeah. During that yeah. period. Yeah, there's the monument at the mm -hmm. Middle Walk Road. Okay, Donna Herod was she was a victim of that going home and she was shot during a police raid in the village. So we've had our experiences and so we recognize all the names that we have not called because Sister Trico yes, Sister Trico Quiana, you know. So uh, we want to recognize their contribution and uh, for those who are among us one more um, Reagan Martin Reagan Martin he it's was on, also on his inspiration that the museum came about also. yes so those are all uh, people contributed and so uh, their presence here among us is welcome and we hope that they will continue to be guiding lights and uh, uh, their memories will be inspiration for us as we continue on our life's journey. And just as you can call all these names, um, <clears throat> Brother UC has a book, Buxton Friendship in Print and Memory, where he would have uh, documented some of the contributions of many of these individuals 
Uh, but um, there is still a lot more to be done to recognize others who continue to be part of the inspiration of our village. And we're hopeful that our young people can learn about these individuals and be inspirations uh, for others to follow. And so, Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. I would like to call now upon my sister, a phenomenal woman. We shared the same let me rephrase. We are together as sister and brother. I look up to her as Queen Mother. She has so much to offer. She has offered and she continues to offer. We are both members of the steering committee of Abda and at this point in time, I recognize Asante Sana. To the female energy in here, I say Ma'at. And to the male energy, I say Hote. Now, in keeping with our African tradition, may I have permission that I may continue to speak? Thank you. Abarigani. Missouri. Thank you. Okay, when we say Abarigani, what we're saying is like they would say in the street, what's up? What's happening? What's going on? What is it? And today, it's near. It's the fifth day of Kwanzaa. So your response would be near. Okay? So let's try that again. Abarigani! Near! Yeah. Great, great, great. All right. I want to welcome our visitors from the embassy. Akwaba. To all the esteemed persons here. To our director, my brother over there. <laughs> to the man behind all of this creativity here, Brother Kwesi Easton. It's an honor. <laughs> Queen Mother Yvette. My fellow Queen Mother, I welcome you. I want to say welcome to each and every one of you who took the time and the opportunity to be here. And I know it's difficult because you've worked all week, well, putting aside the holidays, and today's the day when you do most of your running around, but you found time to be here. My task today is to talk to you about Kwanzaa. I think but the Castillo did a wonderful job in explaining to you how it came about. But I'd just like to add a few little pieces in there. It came about, yes, after the Watts riots in 1965. And I'm proud to say 
that later on I worked in Watts, even though they would argue and say, no, you worked in Los Angeles. But it was just a street, 120th Street that separated Watts from LA, what they call LA, you know, what they call the um, city of, um, of California, of LA. And I like to say I worked in Watts, because <laughs> Watts is where my people were, and Watts is where the revolution started. And why it's important that I give you this little bit of information is that it happened because of our struggles. You see, you did not have a hospital in Watts. You did not have a hospital. So when, if there was an accident, the parents would take the children inside through a cloth over because that's it, person's gonna die right there. No ambulance to come, nothing. And um, this continued for a very long time because they had to find themselves all the way down to the general hospital, which was further down in um, LA, as we call it. And so this lady was pregnant, which was way across the other side. And he was stopped and they had an altercation and the guy was shot. And of course that was the straw that broke the camel's back. So uh, it was very, very horrible and traumatic. As brother said, so many persons lost their lives. But as a result of that, they acquired from the very residents in the area land and they built a state-of-the-art hospital that was called Martin Luther King Jr. Hospital. And the Drew Medical School named after Dr. Charles Drew that was responsible for the blood transfusion. And I want you to know that he died for want of a transfusion because he met with an accident. And because he was African, they didn't take him to the hospital right away. But when they found out who he was, and they decided he had lost too much blood. So this, this is sort of struggles that we've had. And um, I must say that I'm proud to say that I worked at Martin Luther King Hospital for 21 and a half years. So I just wanted to give that little bit of information. Okay, let's talk about Kwanzaa. As brother said, the word Kwanzaa is a Swahili word that means first fruits. And it's a word that's very, very popular in East Africa. As a matter of fact, Tanzania, they celebrate the festival. And it's very appropriate that we're standing here in Buxton today talking about Kwanzaa. Because brother said, and I noted, that it was the resilience of our four parents that put this village together. They pooled their resources and they bought this. It was an abandoned plantation and all those later became villages. But why it's so important is that the monies that were acquired to build and to buy these abandoned plantations came from the produce that they sold. It was the produce that brought in the monies because they sold their produce and they buried their coins and they saved what they had from after time, which is the monies that they were paid after they worked 39 hours what you would have called overtime, but it was after time because they weren't paid for the 39 hours. They had to work those before they could get paid. So 
it is that sort of money that they pulled together with monies that they sold, um, that they made from selling their produce. They had their farmlands and they worked it and they were able to do that. So it is wonderful that this Kwanzaa is actually celebrating the first fruits. And that is wonderful. Okay. Now we have seven principles. And those principles are very, very important to us. Braga went through them. I don't want to go into too much of a detail and depth because I'm hoping that when we light the candles and um, we should be using the proper language for the things that we are talking about. Sorry, okay, the mic, okay. So when we do the Unguzo Saba, when we light um, sorry, those are our principles. When we light the candles, right, we have to go through each one of the principles. May I ask the um, Master of Ceremony, at what point in time are we going to light the candles? What is the good time? You want us to do it now or later? We can do it now? Okay. Then that would make it better because as I speak about these things, you will be able to understand um, the principles. All right. Before we go, let us go through the symbols because we know that in every culture, we do things symbolically and we have symbols. Our symbols are for the Kwanzaa table, the first thing we look at are the colors. We look at the black, the red, and the green. That came actually, if you research um, that, we have self-determination. I know it took a lot of that for some of you to be here today, but self-determination is very important because that is what we need if we are to go forward as a people. Then we have, after that, we have Ujima. I didn't call Kuchi Chakri, but that's self-determination. We have Ujima, collective work and responsibility. Ujama, which was yesterday, cooperative economics. Near purpose, kuumba creativity, imani faith. We saw a typical example today of creativity. Sister Candace came to the table and she realized we did not have a makeka. So she went next door, got some, asked for coconut branch, and she made us a makeka. Let's give her a round of applause. That is creativity. And on that, let me just quickly, before we light the candles and talk about the significance of it, let me just quickly say that we are blessed with what we call genetic series. We have genetic series count of seven. We're the only race of people that have that. And the extra numbers is what gives you your creativity. So give yourself a round of applause. Now, what I would like us to do is this. I would like to start lighting the candles. Those of you who were at Kwanzaa on Tuesday would know that there was a little boy in the play that they did explaining the meaning of Kwanzaa. And he said, oh my gosh, now they're working Obia. <laughs> it was very, very funny, but it was nice because he saw the black candle. Now, as I said earlier on, the black candle represents the people. 
But it is very important that I start by asking a young person to light the candle. But the young person, will that person be, can that person read? Well, we'd have to have an adult read it for her, okay? Come on, you light, and we'll have someone read the message for you, or I'll read it for you since you're little, all right? Now, why I'm asking the young person to light it is that this young person is her future, and we start with a young person because we want that first candle to be lit by our future. And that is the molding candle, which is the unity. So can you um, give her the matches and help her to light the first one, please? What is your name? Akia. Mm -hmm. They can't hear you. Akia. 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 Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. No, no, no. It's a picture. Thank you. Give her a round of applause. The candle she just lit, since she couldn't read it for you, it says to strive for and maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and race. Thank you so much, ma'am. this point, ask Queen Mother Yvette to do Kuchi Chakalia for us. Now, um, this is where it gets a little sticky. It depends on whose school of thought, one moment please, before she lights, it depends on whose school of thought you're in. Because normally, we light, which is always the custom, the red, but where it differs is that some school of thought, like Mr. Clark would tell you, you start inside working outwards, and other persons would say, you start outward working inwards. So let's start outwards and work inwards. So you would start, you would light the far right candle. And now she will read you the principle that she lit. Queen Mother, please read the principle that you lit. Could you check on your self-determination? Which says, self-determination requires that we define our common interests and make decisions that are in the best interest of our family and the community. Can we have a volunteer for the third principle, which is Ujima? Can, can I have someone who would like to come up and light the candle? Ujima? Rain lights the candle for Ujima. Ujima means collective work and responsibility. Let me ask the audience. So what do you think we mean when we say collective work and responsibility? What do we mean when we say collective work and responsibility? Coming together and work together. Coming together and work together. Responsibly. Responsibly. Okay, the reason why we have to do this together is that Sally, brother's shaking his head and saying no. Would you like to tell me what no, you I'm not think? No, I'm not, I'm just shaking my head. Oh, you're just doing that. Okay, okay. All right. You've got to say wait. yes, not no. All right. Okay. Um, the reason we're doing it this way is because Kwanzaa is a family 
we do all the activities together. If we're building the family and we're building the community, we have to do it together. So this is what is important. All right. So Rain, can you light the candle for us, please? No, no, no. No, we alternate. You do the green one. No, the green. Excellent. One more. Naima, will you read for her what her card says, please? Ujima, collective work and responsibility, reminds us of our obligation to the past, present, and future, and that we have a role to play in community, society, and the world. Now, collective work and responsibility. That is so very, very important. Extremely, extremely important that we do that because if we're not doing things collectively and if we're not responsible for what we're doing, we're wasting our time. And the principles of Kwanzaa is to make us stronger and to make us better family, community, and nation. If we live by those principles, we have it all made for us, all right? Now, I see I have a volunteer before me asking, but that's all right. <laughs> we have someone who will light the candle for Ujama, Cooperative Economics. Cooperative economics emphasizes our collective economic strength and encourages us to meet common needs through mutual support. Ashi. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Can we have someone who will do? The next one. What do you think the next one is? Nia. What's the next principle? Nia. 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 Today, today, today is Nia. I asked you earlier on about a Ghanaian. You said Nia. Yeah. So will someone light the ca candle for Nia? I have a volunteer. Good afternoon everyone, I'm Adalia Goodrich, a member of the Young Visionary Club. This was the young lady that assisted me with a knife and getting the branches to make the makeka. Okay. Can you light the candle for us, please? 
Now you're gonna light the second floor. Yes, that one. And can you explain to can you explain to us what it says? Nia, purpose, encourages us to look within ourselves and to set personal goals that are beneficial to the community. Asante Sana. Thank you. The next one is Koumba. And I'm going to ask Sister Candace to do that since it's creativity and you know why, right? Yes. Please light the candle. Make us our make use of our creative energy to build and to maintain a strong and vibrant community. Ashe. Thank you. And I think I'd ask Brother Kwesi Easton to light the last candle for us. when you're in the open and you have the wind. Thank you. Imani Faith focuses on honoring the best of our traditions, draws upon the best in ourselves, and keeps us strive for a higher level of life for humankind. By affirming our self-worth and confidence in our ability to succeed, and triumph in righteous struggle. Ashi. That is exactly what, brother, as a community, as a family, if we strive to go through our principles, there's no way, no way, brother Castillo will stand up and tell me again, ever, to look at what Buxton is today because we would have been able to put it back to where it was, all right? That is, that's what is important. All right, let me just throw something out to you right now. 
my community daughter, my daughter, that's my daughter sitting there, Rosalind, would you say that in the family this year that's gone, you have achieved unity? I would say uh, about... Let them hear you. Greetings to my brothers and sisters. I would say for this year, I have achieved a great a lot of unity. I had three sisters that despised me because of my African spirituality and my maturity that I didn't talk about for six years now. And I am now re reunited with all three and they are now funding my own But do you think that you have achieved 100%? I would say about 90, 10% more would be my uh, like, Good. Like, so uh, then what, what we're looking at is that next year, when we meet, sister must be able to say that over this last year, she has achieved that 10%. Ashe, Ashe. Ashe. I'm doing, I'm showing you how you reach out to see if you have achieved yes. your principles. Right? How have you achieved it? Have you achieved cooperative economics yeah. in the family? Would you say you've achieved that? Sister Gwyneth, have you achieved cooperative economics? you have and there's no room for improvement there is room for improvement good so next year you would say that you you tell us that you've seen improvement because you will work on that the point i'm trying to make is that when you go through your principles and you realize that you're short in some of them then you know the ones that you have to strengthen queen mother even cooperative Work and responsibility. Do you think in this village we have <laughs> achieved it? Um, Tell us the percentage so we know what you have to work on. Um, this is a cooperative village because we would have bought it. Yes, but have we achieved but, um, the, the work and responsibility? Up to a certain point, we have, but there is need for improvement. Precisely. So you know then that your task and the task of others in the village would be to work to make sure that you bring up that cooperative work and responsibility that you can see that. You know, one of the things that we have to understand as a family and a village is we have to stop this nonsense about that's not my job. That's not my area. That's not my reason. That's not my job. You have to realize that in a community, everyone has to pull together. You don't say it's not mine, it's his, or it's not this, it's that. You know, we grew up in this village where you had, and in other villages it was the same you had the extended family and you know what the extended family was not just your family the neighbor the neighbor next to you in three four houses down they all looked out they all cared they all did what they had to to help you and others around and that is what we have to get back to we have to get back into building the family and community to the point where if you see someone throwing garbage, you must be able to monitor them and say, don't throw that there. Yes. Don't throw it in the drain. Don't That's do that. That is not correct. And it is important. I'm happy to see that we have a few young ones here today. And even though they're young, I hope they're understanding the message because they're the future. They're the ones that are going to have to take it forward. Yes, little ones? You understand what we're saying, right? Good, you're the pioneers. So with that, we've had a great start. I can go on talking about Kwanzaa because for me, it is one of the most important achievements that we have had so far in that we can build. 
And what we want to do is to have this extended. We had it on Tuesday at the Aquaba Center. Yesterday I got a call from a friend that says, we're here at ACTA and there's nothing going on. I said, what do you mean? We had it on Tuesday. You mean we don't have it every day? They were dressed there. This is no joke. They were standing there thinking that there was activities. So what, we were, what I'm asking you to do is the young ones here, is this mommy or just friend? Okay, whoever, um, then start practicing your Kwanzaa at home. And don't make excuses to tell me, I don't have a canara. <laughs> you are creative. Get some glasses or something and yeah. stick them together and put the candles in, yes. all right? Yes. And start practicing at home every evening before the evening meal. You get the family together. You talk about what the principle is. You light that candle, all right? And then you ask whether you think as a family have we achieved this during the year and how can we build on it, how can we strengthen. So I want to thank Brother Easton. I want to thank Brother Castillo. I want to thank Brother Eon Abrams. And more importantly, I want to thank the people behind the scenes. Miss Henry, Miss, Miss Karen, and all the others who are working behind the scene that help to make this a possibility and you that are here. The visitors that I came and met, I don't know your names, but I want to thank you all because this is very, very important to us as a people and to us as a community. And I hope that we will continue to build and continue in strength and strength. Ashe. We love a poem from Sister Tandesi, and then, when she's finished, Brother Jaswick Hope, who we haven't heard from for a long time, would light us up. Thank you. Thank you, Brother. Oh, thank you. Hamjambo. Elders, please permit me to go for it. Thank you. So, <laughs> thank you all for having me here. Um, especially to our Queen Mothers <laughs> and Queen One Evet. I was privileged to um, be in Africa when they were coronated. I was happy to be a part of their coronation. It was lovely. Um, I've learned a lot and listening to you today, there's so much more that I have to learn. I do appreciate all that you have. And to all our other great, graceful, that are aging wonderfully, Queen Mothers and our brothers. Thank you very much, I'm happy to be here. So um, I'm doing, a, it's a dramatic um, poetic piece and it was done a few hours ago by request of Queen Mothers. I hope you guys, I put together a few hours, hope you guys um, enjoy it. So it is um, titled, you know what is Kwanzaa? You know what is Kwanzaa? You really know what is Kwanzaa? You joking or you playing tricks? Kwanzaa is an African holiday created to celebrate Africans' creativity and we culture created by Dr. Mulan Karan in 1966. You know it's Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa is celebrated annually from December 26th to the 1st of January. You know it's Kwanzaa. It is based on seven principles over seven days. We call it the Nguzu Sabo. You really know what's Kwanzaa? Brother, the back the door, yam. Kwanzaa is Swahili for first fruit. So you know the thing is African. We have some principles and we also have some symbols. The force of these symbols is the mechanic.
makeka. And the makeka is the foundation on which all the other symbols must respond. That represent we foundation. On the makeka is the canaro. I didn't say canary. I said canaro. The canaro speaks to we, our ancestors that held these principles together. Representing the colors of Kwanzaa is some lovely candles, red, black, and green. It comes from the liberation flag, you know, from the African liberation. These candles align with the seven principles that we must observe daily. Umoja, unity, the first day. Kuji Chakalea, self-determination. Ujama, Ujima, creative work and responsibility. Ujama, create collective economics. For remember black people, we must make the money. I and, and near the fifth purpose, we have a purpose. It's why we here and we ancestors fight for we. Kuumba, creativity, yeah, no, it is deep down in regime. And last but not least, celebrating on the first day of the year, Imani, faith, we must carry it through. I tell you about them rest of principles. You really know about Kwanzaa. You know about Kwanzaa. Man, I tell you, we got them Hindi. The corn, this represents the children, the future generation. We have the Kikumba, Cha Umoja, the unity cup, which we all must drink from. You have the Mazeo, the corn, what Kwanzaa represents first fruit man you really know about kwanzaa nice principles bright colors time for spend with the family and future generation for focus on rebuilding and we creativity man don't forget the exciting part these oradies what we give to the children for their accomplishments so with all of this you still you know about kwanzaa well, if you didn't know, now you know. Thank you. Kwanzaa greetings to all. This piece is called Freedom. Freedom come and come and come and freedom still to come and kwanza come and drum and come and kwanza still to come and people free so free so free and people still must be set free yes what it is to be, must be, must be, until the opening of our eyes, must see, must see. We see what it is to be free, partially. We see and we feel the pangs of poverty, but freedom come, must come, must come must rise up like the sun must find a place on this ground yes what it is to be must be and what is a must must happen the light of oppression must die must darken the light of freedom must light must brighten now we must unite, read that, read that, must come together 
let love be our might. For we must live, must live, must live, must survive, must suffice, must surface. Yes, freedom come, must come, must come. Yes, freedom must be coming. Aluta continua. At this time, we love someone whose education started in the womb of his mom. Because with all or okay. What we have here for a museum could not have been. <coughs> My brother, who made so many sacrifices in order to be successful. Their ancestors will continue to shower blessings upon him. The creator has shown him the path for him to walk. As he continue to walk that walk, let we listen to him talk. Brother Keith, your turn. Good afternoon, sisters and brothers. You'll notice I started with sisters first. <laughs> since they are the creators. But first, um, the praise or whatever you may call it is not mine. It's all of you, everyone present here. Without you, there would have been no me. Without you, there would have been no museum. And without my ancestors, there would have not have been my mother too. So first, my job here is simple because you've heard from Sister Penda, you have heard from <laughs> our brother there, and the, all the other persons who spoke about Kwanzaa, and you came here to hear about Kwanzaa, to learn about Kwanzaa, and also to um, see for the future how you can be a part of Kwanzaa in some form or the other. Um, even though uh, my name was mentioned, I will still repeat for the record, my name is Keith Easton, that since our inception on August the 4th, 2018, we have hosted economic, agricultural, and health fairs. We are able to attract numerous visitors and students from the various villages, universities, African kings and queens, the president from our government, um, various ambassadors and staff from our embassies, and we have representation of um, that from the Chinese embassy. And um, I see one of my contacts um, here, right? And um, we also had representatives from CARICOM. So in our five years plus, I would say we have accomplished a lot. And we have... Yes, and most recent, um, as the sister mentioned, Woody Maya, right? So you find that we are now getting what we deserve in terms of um, recognition, but we're still waiting for monetary recognition, right? So, you know, so, so, but as we say, things come when it's ready right now the other thing that we have to and that I have to acknowledge on behalf of the board not only the board in the US but the board over here and you'll, be, you'll notice I'm not giving you a speech I'm going back and forward right and but, um, Buxton was able to benefit a lot from brother UC's efforts right um, 
and we must acknowledge him. Um, from the establishment of County High School um, to his participation in numerous ventures in the village. Um, Bear in mind, I attended County High School. <laughs> All right, so I got some of um, and a lot of his teachings. Good. So um, County High School produced a lot of st notable students that are all over the world. You can go in whatever country, right? One, you'll find a Guyanese. Two, you'll find a Bostonian. Regardless of what part of the world you go. Good. So, um, coming back to cooperative economics. For those folks here, like uh, Brother Jaswick and Dion, you will know way back we had boatloads um, of uh, produce coming from the back dam, you know, um, the market, we had a very vibrant market, there's no market now. Um, those two buildings, if before you leave, just stand up and look straight there, you'll see two buildings, right? On the left is a garment factory, and on the right is a plastic factory. The garment factory was started in the 60s, um, based on the idea of some women, and um, it, but you see, took on the challenge to work with them, and the garment factory was established as a cooperative. And it was one of the few cooperatives in the village. No, in the country, but several cooperatives were in the village, several. We had one at the County High School called the Buxton Beekeepers Co-op, um, of which the event was part of, you know. Um, we still have um, frames and, um, info and, and um, stuff there to set up hives at some point um, in the village. But the uh, garment factory and the plastic factory were the largest employers of people in the village were the largest employers of people in the village. And right now, what do we have in the garment factory? We have a work carpentry workshop. What we have in the plastic factory, um, I'm still not sure because a, a, a church started and um, I went in there and um, I saw, you know, I'm not sure what I saw. So, um, what we are trying to do through the museum is bring back Buxton to not what it was before, because times have changed. The country has changed, right? The world has changed. We have to bring back Buxton and also um, work along with other villages in order for us to keep developing ourselves um, to meet the challenges of the future, right? The future, um, I'm not a politician, I would never ever be, right? Um, we're not involved in politics here, right? Um, and um, as such, but everybody here knows what is happening around the world. You know what is happening um, on our borders, you know what is happening, you know. And um, as I said, I'll be rambling, but what we're trying to do is bring back Buxton, not to what it was, but to take it further, not the 21st, but the um, 30th century, and with that we need everyone help, everyone here help, right? Uh, in order to go forward. Now, um, trying to summarize, there's one person or two people I must recognize. One, she texts me today. When I visited her museum in Baltimore in 2006, and at the invitation of a very good friend of mine that was doing some work on uh, um, construction um, for me, he had a sculpture, um, I think it's an 11 foot, foot sculpture. Um, you would see it in the museum, Creativity. His name is Wilfred Martin, who passed during this year. And 
When I went to that museum, the name is AVAM, American Visionary Museum. The founder of that museum is one by the name of Rebecca Hofburger. Right? Her name tells you who she is. And um, I did not see her that day. And her um, message to is not to call her doctor to call Rebecca is good, even though she owns she holds several doctorates. Right? Um, based on her principles and religious um, and so on and so on. She started that museum in, um, over 25 years ago. And when I visited the museum, walking through that museum in night, um, and these are things that museums do to you. When properly constructed, when properly um, put, and we're trying to get there, right? We're trying to get there. Um, businesses pay people, right, money to go and set up um, what you call supermarkets and various um, places that would attract customers when they go in to certain commodities or to certain areas. Um, a company my son was working with, he was employed to do that. That as soon as you hit the store, right, this is what you'll see, this is there, that is there, this is where you go, and this is how you shop, right? That museum was an inspiration to me. When I left there, there was something in my subconscious that kept bothering me. And I said to myself, after a couple of days, and after a huge celebration by my friend Wilfred, I said to myself, why can I bring back that information to Buxton and start something of my own? And what I did from 2006, and I'm still doing it, is visiting museums um, wherever I go, around the world, in Guyana, in the US, and wherever. I just visited um, two other museums, which African museums, um, African International, International African Museum, in, um, uh, this is in Charleston, and another museum in Charleston, and Charleston Museum was the first museum in America. Um, you know, to be set up in America. But anyhow, um, so I started traveling in order to visit museums. And finally, I was introduced to Rebecca by Mr. Martin. Rebecca never saw me. She didn't know who I was, but she endorsed the museum. She gave me all her support. And I saw her a year plus after. So, thanks to her. Now, and when I introduced her to my wife, strange enough, my wife worked in a Jewish establishment for over 30 years. They both connected based on culture, right? So, regardless of where you are from, what religion, we are all one. Um, let me see if there's anything else I need to bring to you. Now, in closing, again, I thank all our contributors um, for our artifacts, for our um, uh, manuscripts, for um, donations, for our historical everything, for being part of us. And um, for everyone that are here, including Sister Pender's group, right? And um, for the uh, various, um, <coughs> excuse me, and <coughs> yes, and for the various performances. And once again, to the Board of Directors of the Buxton Friendship Museum Archives and Cultural Center, the staff, and also going back to the U.S., the Board of Directors who believed in me uh, when I put the ideas to them, right? And they said, we will do it. Again, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, yeah. sisters and brothers. <laughs> thank you for inviting us today, letting me know a lot more about Kwanzaa. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, uh, you know, as a diplomat, uh, sometimes we feel lonely, especially during holidays. 
um, in Christmas. Last e uh, in last year's Christmas, one local friend invite invite us to have dinner, family din family gathering with his families, make us so feel at home. And this year, thank you all for inviting us to be here with extended families. Yes. And I remember one month ago when we were first here visiting this museum. A, a very wonderful and inspiring trip. I remember a lot of things. I remember, I remember the history of the starting of the village, the brave, the brave women and men who stopped the train. Yes, yes, yes. And I remember this symbol. Always look back. <laughs> yes, yes. And I remember so many people in this village who who is very strong, and everybody will hire him. To, <laughs> no need a, a a car or something else. Yes, and some and someone who is who can speak loudly, don't need a microphone, yes, yes, uh, a bakery, uh, a baker, and uh, yes, and uh, who is good at traditional medicine, yes, so many things, so impressive, because I grow, I grew up in rural areas of China, so today's get gathering bring me back to my childhood, when, uh, during summer days, when we harvest the wheat, the corn, we work together, and after that we have dinner together. Bring me back to the old memories. And today I know more about Kwanzaa, know about the, the colors, the seven values. Also make me uh, reflect what the, 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 the percentage of my achievement last year. When you talk about the, when you talk about the co uh, 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 collective economies, I it just happened last night because my my sister she got a toothache and is uh, is uh, have treatment in a dentist and my mother said uh, this will cost a lot of money <laughs> so I I said oh. The, I will, I, I, I will take care of it. Take care of this. Yes, because this year also my father he had some surgery. Uh, as his eldest son, I also contribute my part. So that's yes, that's the first year of my contribution. So I think um, this echoed with the same today. Um, thank you so much. We look forward to. Be here, be here with you more, and look forward to know more about the village. Let us be a family together. Thank you. Ashe, Ashe. It is so important when persons from a different community can relate to what our principles of Kwanzaa stands for. We really appreciate that we are on the right track. To uh, our Chinese brothers and sisters presented today, um, I don't know if it is right for me to ask to convey a, a message to your great leader, President Xi Jinping, um, for his great commitment towards the people of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. We, the African people, we are very grateful. Thank you very much. Um, I stand, I came here this afternoon to bid you um, good success and uh, everything that is good on this day of Kwanzaa from the Guyanese, the organization that don't know how much of you are uh, acquainted with Guyanese United. But Guyanese United has been a non-profit, non-government, a non-political organization that has been doing work throughout Guyana up until recently. They did um, uh, outreach on the Linden Suicide Highway, which was very successful. And um, 
it, there was a visit to the museum by one of our um, directors, which um, he chose to be anonymous. I always tell him, I will mention your name. He said, no, 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 don't mention my name. So um, most of the base um, of uh, uh, Guyanese United, the executives are uh, business executives throughout the world, in Guyana, in the United States, United Kingdom, Canada. They are corporate executives and so on that will contribute to the equipment of Guyanese United. And um, there are plans in train for um, the museum here, which the brother spoke to you about. And um, he is really based in the Washington, D.C. area. Washington, D.C. area. And so um, they asked me to bid um, all that is good and every success. So thank you very much and let us enjoy and keep the good work. Thank you. On what we brought from our farm. Today we ripped uh, yesterday. This is uh, amaranth. It is a African spinach. We are the only farm here in Guyana that are producing this presently. We got the seeds from Nigeria and we tried it out and we're successfully reaping it right now. And it is a super food. It was from this vegetable that uh, I, I don't know, maybe the Americans or the experts created uh, kale. Do you know about kale? Kale is very expensive. It's a super food. It was this. They tasted it in Africa and they took it into a lab and they created a GMO which is now kale. So you can imagine what nutrients this have that cause the interest to actually go to create a substitute. So ladies and brothers and sisters, definitely reach out to us. We will be having it fresh weekly available. It's uh, a little bit expensive. A bundle is $800 for a bundle, but it's a super food. It has great uh, percentage of uh, iron, potassium, magnesium you name it it's like 19 supplements that you can get out of it you can dry it you can blend it with avocados coconut water uh, the the amaranth by itself and uh, cane juice and it will be a complete immune booster and defense mechanism as a breakfast shake so that's it amaranth here in Guyana now blessings and I am Rosalind Beresford, the president of Grassroots Justice Movement. Blessings. <laughs> Thank you, good morning. Elders, good afternoon again. Um, I am Candice Curie, and I bring greetings on behalf of the Actors Steering Committee, the Actors Sisters in Unity, and the Actor Ayo, which is the youth arm of Actor Ayo Youth. Um, Kwanzaa, yes, Kwanzaa is very significant and it's beautiful that, you know, we are celebrating and more and more persons are becoming aware of um, the celebration, the principles. Um, it also causes you to reflect um, for our celebration on Tuesday. Um, one of the sort of a sad reflection was that we miss a person that was very, very that still is, was a miss, and her memories will continue to be dear to us, um, Sister Clement Marshall. And um, I bring greetings to you based on how she has lived her life. So we 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 understand that you know for some of us we accept that we exist in three realms there's the unborn the ancestral realm and then we're here in the present so while you are here in the present you need to utilize this vessel to do what you need to do to leave a mark 
to help your community, to help the people. And with this, our principles is not just for us to come out here today and to acknowledge we understand and ashe and we greet and we eat, but it's to, for us to take it home and to teach the future generation. A lot on the streets, um, our children are saying that, you know, the big people don't teach me nothing. And then we have the old, our older folks, they're saying, the little children, the them young people don't listen. They said they got a life to live. I think that we need to put a stop to this. We need to bridge the gap wherever it is. Right? It doesn't matter if the young people don't listen. They don't listen because they don't know. But you need to keep, you know, grabbing the bull. You need you need to grab the bull by its horn. You need to keep beating the nail. All of these principles and, and these things that you know that you need to keep doing. Even though they say that they don't they don't want to hear, I got my life to live. You still need to teach us. In our quiet moment, in when our backs are against the wall, we say, you know, Sister Queen Mother did say this to me. I didn't listen. And I need to tell somebody else. And the person that I'm going to tell is the generation after me. So you, you will be able to continue what is needed if you keep teaching us. One of the things with our young people, I'm happy to see our young people here today. Um, our young people, we don't have respect for our elders. In Africa, I was so taken back with the amount of respect that they show our elders, our queen mothers. We do not present anything to them as if we shoulder in and we're as big and, you know, aged with them. And we have the experience. We are yet to learn from them. So, you know, you show that humility. I am yet to learn from you. Queen mother, I have respect for you, my elder, my brother. Our young people don't know these things and they're not respectful because they don't know. But they need to know. They need to be aware, they need to ed be educated because this is the way that we are losing ourselves as a people. Sister Marshall was always there. You didn't, you didn't want to know? She used to collect you. I remember I learned to make conky. <laughs> I say it all the time and it's because of her, I'm grateful. And you know, she makes it, she just take, taste it. <laughs> she wants some with a smile, you know? And then you, I'm, it's good, I want to know more. And she pull, and she would pull you in. She, her life has touched a lot of persons. And, and you here today, you are talking about so many of our elders who has left their marks. And you need to continue to tell those stories so that our future generation have stories to carry on and also to take pattern from. They have persons to look up to. They have somebody to reflect when their backs are against the wall. That moment in time that you say, you know, Elder so-and-so told me this. Or before I make this decision, some little voice in the head, Elder so-and-so said this to me, I shouldn't go this way, or I shouldn't engage in this activity. You know, so be that little voice. Thank you. Good afternoon. Esteemed Queen Mothers, Penda, Yvette, and Queen Mother Esther. Um, gentlemen, brothers, sisters, a very good afternoon. And I would want to commend the work of the museum here in Buxton Friendship um, for what it has been doing. Um, when I first came to visit, I was really impressed, still I'm impressed, and it has inspired me. And so when I received the notice of the Kwanzaa celebration being observed here today, I didn't signal, but Mr. Easton said to me that he knew I was coming. He probably felt it in my in his spirit. And so I had to come because I really <laughs> want to commend the work being done here um, by the team, um, it is the kind of thing we need to have in our villages to remind us 
and to guide us, like our sister was just asking, that we have symbols, indicators, and other elements of things to inspire us to do well and do good for ourselves and our communities. This museum is serving that purpose. I know it because it, is, it has done that for me. Um, I know that a lot of work is yet to be done in terms of having um, other persons come and visit and see and learn and be able to um, be inspired by what they see. But it's a process. And we all will have to engage in a process of assisting each other, whether we're from Buxton, Ithaca, Mocha, Queenstown, Dartmouth, or wherever you're from. Um, the element that this is driving forward is for us to be able to live the principles of Kwanzaa that we learned of and we're reminded of today and to ensure that those principles and things be part of our lives going forward. And so I would want to again commend the work of the museum, the entire team uh, for what they're doing and certainly uh, to indicate on our school chart um, next year how much we have achieved collectively. I thank you. I'm John Will, brothers and sisters. Uh, to our esteemed guests and to our elders, our queen mothers and so on, I want to uh, recognize your presence. Um, we have among us Brother Keith Scott, who is visiting with us. Thanks for coming, Brother Keith. Um, I was asked by Sister Hazel Wilford to extend greetings on behalf of the Guyana Institute of Historical Research. Uh, she, of course, uh, grew up in friendship and uh, she manages an organization in a similar way that Keith does, um, very, you know, committed to what she does. And um, so that organization, sometimes we believe that she is a one woman show, but the show goes on, <laughs> right? And it's good to have those people among us. Uh, the tenacity in Keith is what, and his fortitude, is what brought this to fruition and he, I believe he lives the museum and when we say he speaks a lot he speaks for a long time because he loves to tell the story of the museum it doesn't matter how many times he has to tell it <laughs> uh, because he lives it and we understand that but sometimes we say oh god keep this time you stop <laughs> And so Sister Hazel is extending uh, our wishes and she's hoping that the museum will continue to grow. I'm happy that it can be an inspiration even to our Chinese brothers and so that they too can, would have learned not only about the museum, but about the principles of Kwanzaa, strength as we move forward. Thank you. Sorry to be up here, <laughs> but um, two things. One, uh, there's a sister whose birthday is today, and she's a hard worker, and she has been with us from the inception, not only from the museum, but from the young visionaries, and that's Mrs. Ingrid Nelson. Um, can you raise your hand? And then... Um, Looking a little backward, we have Sister Viola, um, whose birthday also was, I think, last week, uh, Viola Henry. Right, so we'd like to wish the two of them happy birthday, and anybody else whose birthday is today, right? Um, but I'll pass you back to Brother Cass. Oh, one more thing. Um, Brother Kwayana book, Boxing in Print and Memory, right? We have, um, we have the book in the museum, Boxing in Print and Memory, right? And we also have another book of which, um, uh, on the garment factory, right? Um, the largest employer in the villages. Um, we have that book also in the, um, in the museum, 
So, um, if you're interested in any of those books, um, they're in the museum, or you can, um, you know, give up your name and you know, and say that you're interested in those books. Thank you. It's a silk, silk panda with bamboo. Uh, some Guyanese friends ask, always ask me why you, you couldn't send a panda here. <laughs> I will say because of the weather. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But uh, as a uh, uh, makeup, so we, we, we bring the panda here. Also, a small one. Yeah, one little panda. Uh, I, my personal small gift is also a panda because I'm from Sichuan province. President Ali just visited this year. And that's also the hometown of panda. So, yes. This is a vase. Vase. Yes. Uh, because uh, you know, China is famous for its name is about these ceramics. Yes. yes, 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 yes. So, thank you, thank you so much. So, um, on behalf of the Boston Friendship Museum, um, we must thank the Chinese Embassy for the acknowledgement of our culture and what we are doing at the museum. And uh, as I mentioned, they did state their connection um, with the museum. And um, we will display these um, artifacts in the museum and it would be an acknowledgement that 
Yes, it would be an acknowledgement of what we are continuing to do in terms of um, respect for cultures. Because as you notice, um, we also have some items from Ghana, right? Um, strangely enough, I visited Ghana um, last, no, year before the last December, um, um, along with, um, through my sister there, right? So we have a lot of artifacts from Ghana. We now have artifacts and information from China. Um, you know, so it's not only our future, it's not only the history of Buxton friendship, the villages, and to some extent Guyana, but we'll also be incorporating the cultures of um, the people who all are part of us. Thank you. I understand that you will be donating. Mr. and Mrs. Scott. <coughs> Brother Scott, we go way back. Ministry of Labor, Board of Industrial Training. Now, Uh, we also have, and you notice I have to make sure that Sister Viola is up here because she's the person who meets everybody when they come in, right? So she must be up here to acknowledge these gifts. Um, it's good that we're having um, donations of artifacts and, and so on from um, the public, they see what we're doing, they know what we're doing, and at large now we're having international artifacts. But just a little story. Before we opened the museum, the building was almost finished, and we had no artifact. And a brother was mentioning to me, well, are we still going to open in August? I said, yes, we'll open. Right? I said, well, he quoted, he said, um, as, um, I think it was Churchill's speech, build it and they will come. Am I right? That, but it was, a, I think, a baseball stadium that it should have been built somewhere, in nowhere, and um, they don't know whether people will go or not. But I told him, I said, even if we have one artifact, only one, we'll place it in the center of the museum. And when people come and see that one, they will in turn come and bring others, right? So now we started and the news is spreading and we're getting more as you can see. Again, thank you brothers. Thank you, um, Brother Scott, Sister Scott, right? Okay, good afternoon, audience, brothers and sisters. Happy Kwanzaa. Um, I was clearing up some things from somebody who has passed away. Um, a very notable guy, and he's, some of you might have heard the name Filma Lynch. She was an educator. Yeah. Oh, great. Right? And so, having come into contact with Miss Easton and Miss Viola Henry, I said, you know, these things should not be just thrown out in the street. It's something. We don't get things like these anymore in the store. It's a homemade grater. Yeah. Right, and notice how the holes are punched in the thing. It's almost like a circular thing, right? So it is. It has a pattern, right? So and then there was this old teapot, enamel teapot. You don't see enamel teapots anymore. And then there's this the plane that um, cabinet makers used. So yeah, right. So that when people come to the museum, they must see things that our artisans used years ago, right? These things were built by, this thing was built by a local person. This is what we use to make local furniture. I mean, this, this is not available anymore. And of course, we have the good old, it's heavy, it's heavy so we have a good old mortar. We can't find a pestle, so none of the men will be beaten, you know? <laughs> 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 
Yes, right? So, you want to stand with me? Yes. As I was saying, you know, these items were removed from somebody's home who passed away. Somebody who was loved like any other relatives. This is one of her cousins. And um, so I'm glad that you're here today to witness this and to tell the other relatives, right, that this stuff wasn't thrown in the street, but it was given to the Buxton Friendship Museum, right? So there's the, the martyr, but as I said, the pestle is missing, and um, hopefully it will serve the museum well. So thank you, Miss Easton, when I made contact through Marceline, and she said, well, she couldn't be here today, but I could certainly speak with Viola, and I knew you would be here, so. Thank you, thank you very much, Sister and Mr. Scott, for your donation. We will now have. Thank you and closing remarks by your president, Mr. Cecil Adolphus Simon. Good evening, sisters and brothers. Um, it is indeed a pleasure being here. I think Brother Keith um, surmised everything. He did say thank you in so many ways. I must say that to add to the sister's um, comment there, sometimes sophistication, tradition fades with sophistication. But who decides that? It depends on the persons who keep the history alive. And it is good to see that we have our Chinese brother identifying with the countryside in China and can relate to whatever was being done here. Um, I'm seeing some people in the crowd I recognize, but those days I was a small boy. Is that Mr. Wagen Gardner? Is that Mr. Wagen Gardner behind Mr. Scott? That's not Wagen Gardner. But I remember Mr. Um, the minute he walked in there, there was a there was a type of walk that he had. He used to call him Tibby. Tibby. <laughs> I guess um, maybe the walk was patterned against one of our educators here. What was his name again? The guy who ran um, Smith's College? Richie. Yeah, Richie, Richie, Richie. Even in the Bahamas they talk about Dr. Richie. I said, like, that was a Buxtonian, <laughs> you know? But I'm indeed happy to have been a part of this, um, the proceedings here, and I'm happy to see the turnout. Again, irrespective of what others might think about um, history fading and all of that. It depends on who are the carriers of the history. And I'm very, very much confident that we've got very capable hands. Sister Pinda, I don't think she can remember me. In the days of Sister Violet and all of them, I was a small boy then. Now into UG. <laughs> Afterwards, I, I left and that was a long time ago. But I was a part of the movement. Once again, thank you very much and glad to see you here. Each one, teach one, each one, tell one. Ashe. Proceedings, so you're free to mix and meddle. Those of you who didn't have any opportunity to chat with anyone, this is a good opportunity to do so. And there are samples there: black eye cook up, uh, metal G, and chicken stew, uh, conky, 
cassava pond, coconut buns, and the likes of it. You're free to sample, and they're the real thing behind you. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 